Khomeini, the first big ayatollah of, of the Iranian regime, said that Israel would be wiped off the face of the earth by the year 2040. 2040 and the, the Jerusalem syndrome. You know, we, we just, uh, every year I kind of do this, I'm looking for what is God saying prophetically about this coming year? Well, you're looking at the year 2040, I'm, I'm believing. And uh, tell me what God is saying to you about that year. Well, let me just say, first of all, I am not saying, I said it very clearly in big letters, I am not saying that is the year Yeshua is going to come back. Um, I was trying to give some perspective here. It was interesting that the that the uh, Khomeini, the first big ayatollah of, of the Iranian regime, said that Israel would be wiped off the face of the earth in the year by the year 2040. And I also mentioned that according mm-hmm. to the Hebrew calendar, which we count the years by letters of the alphabet, you get to the end of the alphabet in the year 2040. I mean, so, so we're going to get to the point where we don't have, there's no years left. It's all over. So now, of course, you go back to, you go back to Aleph, you know, you go back to the beginning and there's, you can still make the calendar work. But I'm sure I'm adding that with the fact that, and here's something that maybe some of our, or your listeners here don't understand is that in Israel, there's a huge expectation of the coming of the Messiah. And that, that group of people that are, would be considered religious extremists, radicals by the, the secular society within Israel, that group is growing. But one thing, just because of their, the, the democracy, the number of children they have is they're having eight, nine, ten children each family, and the seculars are having 1.1, you know, it's, so it's, they're growing. And they all believe in the coming of the Messiah. They're all looking at this situation. This is all getting us ready. This is the trouble of Jacob that leads us to the coming of the Messiah. Now, of course, they don't think that's Yeshua. I mean, that's what we're trying to say. Mm-hmm. Like, when, when he comes, you're going to be surprised who it is, you know. But, but they all think it's coming. So what I'm saying is, as we get close to that year, whatever happens, that our people, I'm just imagining that our rabbis, our religious Jewish extremists that don't like don't like Yeshua, they're going to see the calendar starting to run out. We're going to get 10 years from that, seven years from that. And our people can see the prophecies about the seven years and the three and a half years and Daniel. And that. They're going to believe me. And Yeshua said in the end times, you're going to see many false messiahs. I mean, I'm telling you, I know we have lots of false messiahs already in Israel. I can imagine when we get into when we get past 2033, I mean we're going to have a false messiah on every street corner here in Israel. So and so I but and that might be the bad part. On the other hand, I think w- with that there will be an expectation that for the believers in Yeshua all around, we've always said his coming is at hand and his kingdom is at hand. Of course, when we look to eternity whether it's one day or a thousand years, is, is almost nothing compared to eternity. And we all have to live in that sense. I mean, you could die tomorrow. I mean, you, we could have a missile fall on us before the end of this, this uh, broadcast here. But, um, but in the historic chronology of the plan of God, Yeshua said, you won't know the day. But he said, but in, in first, uh, first Thessalonians 5, he said, but you're not children of darkness. You'll understand the times. You don't need to know what the hour is or the day is, but you're going to understand when the times are getting close. And what's going to happen is all of the all of the believers in Yeshua, Bible believers are going to see, well, this is happening. We're beginning to fulfill all the prophecies that lead right up to the second coming of Yeshua. And, and it's going to be obvious. And I, I want to tell you that although Yeshua said, you know, I will come as a thief in the night, in the night Paul explained that. That's talking about unbelievers. That's not talking about us. We're children of the light. It's, we, we won't know the exact day or hour, but we're, we're not going to be surprised. We're going to see mm. these things happening, and we'll see the fulfillment of the prophecies. And I think it's going to get very obvious as we get toward the end. There's going to be some, I mean, you know, whether there's going to be a temple in, in Jerusalem and all this, but things are going to happen that it's going to be really clear that these prophecies are not another thousand years in the future that we're getting uh, very close to that. And that is going to raise up in the hearts of all the believers in the world the urgency to believe for the kingdom of God and to preach the kingdom of God in every nation and to reach all of their own people group. to There's no more time left. You need to receive the Lord now. It's interesting that Yeshua, in Matthew 23 and 24, he gave two big prerequisites for the second coming. I mentioned that in the book. In chapter 24, he said, this gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the nations and then the end will come. Well, obviously, 
God doesn't want the end to come if everybody hasn't had a chance to hear the gospel. But he's also saying the gospel of the kingdom, you know, it's, it's which starts with personal salvation. But we've got to know what God's plan is for this earth so that Yeshua can come back to the earth because he's going to work through us when he gets here. So the gospel of the kingdom must be preached in, in every nation. The second thing he said in Matthew 23, he said to the Jews in Jerusalem, you will not see me again until you say, blesses he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, for all of history, you could have thought, what is this talking about? How could Jesus be saying to people in Jerusalem that he's only going to come back when that when the people in Jerusalem receive him? There wasn't any Jerusalem. There were people weren't here. But now we're here. We're back in the land. Jerusalem is the capital of our nation again. We we have maybe in Jerusalem today maybe 20 Messianic congregations in the Jerusalem area. And we're all praying, blesses you, comes in the name of the Lord every day. Okay, we're a small minority, but the, the, but it's it's happening. That we're getting closer and closer, and as we get closer and closer, that that's why there is such anger against Israel because Satan can see that the idea that the Jews in Israel, the Jews in Jerusalem, are going to are going to welcome Yeshua back. I mean, we're this close to it now. We're here in Israel. We're here in Jerusalem. The Messianic communities in Israel. The uh, Israel is already saying. Here's another good thing. Our only friends in the world are, are evangelical Christians. I mean, they, they're they seeing it partly, so it's happening. And that's why the devil is angry with, what, with what's going on here. But it means that he's only angry because he knows his time is running out. So we have to be strong. Don't be afraid. Yeah, there's a lot of battles in the end time, but thank God Yeshua wins, and we just want to make sure we're on his side. Amen. We need to make sure that we're on his side and whether he comes back in the year 2040 when the Hebrew calendar runs out, that's new information to me. I got to get into this book more to find to, to read that part and understand that. But creating a new synergy for Israel and the church in the end times alignment by Asher and Trader. You can get that anywhere books are sold and you can always go to my charisma uh, shop.com for all of charisma books. So Asher, thank you so much for spending some time with thank me you. today on charisma connections to share this important message for our world today. God bless you and Shalom.